Good morning, Jet Setters. This is the Caledonian Sleeper. That was a great night of sleep. I'm Jet Brooks from greenergrass.com. Let's check it out. The Caledonian Sleeper may just be the best way to travel from London to Scotland. I booked the most deluxe room on this overnight sleeper train and took advantage of everything it had to offer. We left London at 9.15 at night to travel around 500 miles northward for just over 10 hours following the east coast of Scotland before pulling into Aberdeen at about 7.30 in the morning. Tonight's train does not leave from King's Cross Station or St. Pancras Station, which is right there. They're right next to each other. Instead, we've got to make our way over to London Euston, which is about 10 minutes away. There's King's Cross, and here's St. Pancras. And then just over here, this is where I'm walking, that's Euston Station. People have been plying these rails between uh, London and Scotland since like the 1850s, and uh, it feels pretty exciting to add my name to the to the roster of people who've done it. I'm really excited about tonight's trip. Uh, I'm hoping it's a good night's sleep. Uh, we'll find out. I strolled into the station pretty early, so let's talk about tonight's timeline. Access to the first class lounge, which is included for passengers booked into rooms on this service, begins at 7.30 p.m. That's an hour before boarding commences at about 8.30 for a 9.15 departure. If everything goes according to plan, we'll pull into Aberdeen about 7.30 tomorrow morning. Because I'd arrived too early to head straight up to the lounge up there, I just explored the station a bit. And while I waited, I couldn't help but wonder, why are there so many stations here in London? Back home in the States, even our biggest cities like Washington, D.C. or Chicago have just one station. They're often called Union Stations because, historically, they served multiple railway companies. Turns out, something similar happened here in London, but with a little difference. By the mid-19th century, every major railway in the United Kingdom had a presence in London, and they wanted stations to go along with those operations. The stiff competition between these companies led them to try to outdo each other in terms of architecture, which explains the impressive facades of St. Pancras and King's Cross. Euston is a bit more utilitarian thanks to a mid-20th century renovation. Oh well, time flies when you're thinking about travel history. 7.30 means lounge time. The bar is closed, so how about some water? There's not much to this lounge, but it was certainly a nice place to sit and relax as I waited aboard. Ready for boarding platform number one. Boarding was fairly straightforward, and we were greeted by an attendant who was telling passengers exactly where to go based on their tickets. I was told to look for the letter B. I found it. On board. Let's, uh, let's find the room. I'd booked a Caledonian double, the roomiest on the train, and was assigned number four. What a room! This has it all! A bathroom, a sink, a shower, a double bed. This is incredible! We'll have plenty of time to explore this room later. For now, I locked the door because it was time to head up to the club car for dinner. This has to be one of the coolest train cars I've ever seen. It was beautifully appointed and extremely comfortable. I grabbed a seat and perused the menu. It was extensive. In fact, it's far too long to include all of it in this video, so check out greenergrass.com slash menus to see even more. Breakfast was included with the price of my ticket, but dinner was at my expense, and I was more than happy to pay the £10.50 for the only reasonable choice on a trip to Scotland. Haggis with neeps and tatties. I'm not sure what neeps or tatties are, but I'll try it. Haggis is a surprisingly tasty concoction of sheep's heart, liver, and lungs. Neeps, it turns out, are turnips, and tatties, well, those are potatoes. All in, it was a very satisfying meal. The worst part is thinking about what goes into it. You've just got to put that out of your mind. But dinner was over before we'd even left the station. We pulled out right on time at 9.15. But I'm no night owl, so I headed back to my room where I was able to more fully check out the space. This train offers a number of types of accommodation, from seats like this, to classic rooms with twin bunk beds, or an upgraded version called a club room that adds an ensuite shower, 
or you can do what I did and go all out and reserve the massive double. Here, you'll get a shower and toilet combination, a sink, and of course, this massive bed, which was covered with all kinds of amenities. You get a lot of goodies here on the Caledonian Sleeper. Let me show you. There were two bags filled with what Dennis Bunnick might call lotions and potions, really comfortable eye masks, even some chocolate. You're able to adjust the temperature and there are plenty of plugs. There's storage under the bed for things you might not need during your stay on board and easy to access storage for things you might want during the night. Speaking of that, good night. While I slept, I dreamt of Scotland. In addition to my destination of Aberdeen, the Caledonian Sleeper also serves Edinburgh, Glasgow, Fort William, and Inverness. After seven of the best hours of sleep on a train yet, I was left wishing the US maintained its rails as well as the UK. We continued along the east coast of Scotland and the sun began to rise. I took advantage of the shower and then headed back to the club car for breakfast. Even though most other passengers had chosen to have room service, I'd made a reservation for 6.15 in the club car. I had the largest table in the car reserved for me and enjoyed even more scenery until my full Scottish breakfast arrived. To be completely candid with you, I wasn't exactly sure what I was eating, but it was so good. I'm a student of breakfasts, and I embrace a high standard for what constitutes a good start to the day, and this was it. Everything was so delicious. For the next hour or so, I sipped on my coffee and took in the scenery. Now, Wi-Fi is available on the train, but I found it was extremely slow, like almost unusably slow, but it didn't matter. I was just taking in this beautiful Scottish countryside. Also, it's worth saying, this room is, is designed with sleep in mind and not much else. The bed cannot be converted in any way, so there's nowhere to sit. Not that I'm complaining, it was still comfortable to kind of lean here. Overall, this was a remarkable experience. It's one of only two sleeper trains in the United Kingdom, and it was just so comfortable. The staff were friendly and truly proud of their train. But like all of our trips, I paid for the ticket. It cost 405 pounds, and every aspect of this experience oozed Scottish warmth and charm. I've traveled between London and Scotland before, but always by air. I missed out on so much. I had some great conversations with my fellow passengers and the staff in the club car. I enjoyed a solid night's sleep, took in some of Scotland's world-famous cuisine, and arrived in Aberdeen ready for the day ahead. Another trip on board the Caledonian Sleeper is certainly in my future. Between now and the next time, see you on the rails.